Now you can see we're still under active construction here. This is my partially buried greenhouse. In my perfect universe, I would have a full-on earth-sheltered wallapini greenhouse, but there's no way that I'm getting that approved in the suburbs. I've tried to get as close as I can here, and I wanted to walk through the pure concept of a wallapini, how I'm trying to replicate a lot of the aspects of that here, and ultimately the design that we landed on. Starting with the concept of the earth-sheltered greenhouse or wallapini, the basic idea is to use the stable temperature of the earth and dig down and recess the greenhouse into it to help buffer against cold in the winter or excessive heat in the summer. And you just leave the top of it open to capture solar gain, slanting it more towards the south if you live in the northern hemisphere. But the idea is to get as much solar gain as possible through the top of the greenhouse. Improving the design more is to add thermal mass along the wall opposite the direction of the sun to take that heat in the winter and slowly release it at night and prevent freezing conditions in the greenhouse. You would typically place grow beds in front of that thermal mass so that they get plenty of solar gain and that is accessed by a pathway along the edge that's going to get the least amount of sunshine. Additional benefit if you can dig that pathway down and create an access path that is recessed. The reason is that cold air will sink down into that pathway. It makes a cold sink and that will allow your plants to stay above the freezing temperature and the colder air will sink to the bottom. I love wallapinis. I love the design and the simplicity of it. I would absolutely love to put one on this property, but I can't even get a permit for a garden shed here. There's no way I'm getting a wallapini. I have done the next best thing working with what I've got. This is connected straight from my basement, uh, eventually, when this is a proper door next to me instead of a big sheet of plywood. That set the height of the floor here. Then I've got the exterior grade of the backyard coming in. That set the height of this wall. Eventually, when this is finished, I will have polycarbonate twin wall coming up from this wall a short distance and then angling up and landing under those windows. So the greenhouse is going to tuck up underneath those and it's going to be a lean-to style that is physically attached to the house. I am going to start moving to kind of a section view here for you in a second to explain it better. But the plan for my thermal mass is to put 55 gallon water barrels painted black against this wall. Those are two feet in diameter and about three feet tall. And I'm gonna show that here with a section diagram drawn to scale, where you can see the two feet depth of those barrels off of the back wall. When it comes to the growing beds that are gonna go in front of those, I'm on the taller side. For me, a comfortable working height is somewhere between, call it 34 to 38 inches, or three feet or a little above. And I'm going to assume that that's going to be the height of the growing beds as I'm laying this out. That just leaves me with the solar angles and designing my shading to maximize the solar gain when I want it and to minimize it when I don't. Most tutorials will tell you to look at the angle of the sun at noon on the shortest day of the year. I have a slightly different approach that I prefer, which is not to try and maximize daylight on the shortest day, but to maximize daylight and solar gain on the coldest time of the year when you really, really need the heat. And I've got a graph here of my average temperatures over the year by month, and you can see that my coldest month is January. I really, really need the heat then. And so my plan is to focus on the middle of that or January 15th and try and design to maximize solar gain on that particular day. I looked up the angle of the sun at noon on January 15th at my location, and I have put a link in the description below to the site that I used to do this. For me, the sun will be at about 30 degrees above the horizon on January 15th. Now I've gone to a section diagram here and I've overlaid that sun angle with the green arrow. And you can see that even with this four foot tall wall here on the south edge, the sun still will get in almost all the way to the very back of the space and barrels along this north wall should receive full sunlight. Now the other function of thermal mass is to help keep the space cool when it's too hot outside. So if those barrels never get hit with direct sun when it's hot, they will stay cool and they can absorb excess heat from the air. I need to start cooling the space really when it starts getting to about 80 degrees outside. That happens on average from call it early June until about late July. And so I picked June 15th as the day that I was going to design around to try and make sure I got shade on that thermal mass. Going to that same site, um, the sun is gonna be about twice as high in the sky, so 63 degrees above the horizon on June 15th. And I've drawn that in here with the orange arrow. You can see that on June 15th, this four foot wall basically casts no shade. The sun is really high in the sky. 
If I want to avoid the barrels in the back having sun on them, I've drawn a parallel orange arrow here showing where it would have to land so that it misses those barrels and then consequently the shading device along the roof that would allow me to cast that shade. Now I want to put up this shading material on the inside of the roof once and leave it there. I don't want to fuss around with it every month or every season. So I need to understand what happens to the interior of this greenhouse on January 15th if I put the shading where I just drew it. Going back to the green arrows, you can see that with that solar shading on the roof, I end up with less sun getting into the interior naturally on January 15th, but I still have a good section from about two feet above the floor and then about 70 inches above that where I will have full sun coming in and hitting the back wall and that becomes the logical place to put my water barrels. Good thing about that with the barrels being three feet tall is that if I stack them two barrels high and put the bottom barrel two feet above the floor, I should really be able to capture the entire section of this wall that's gonna benefit from that solar gain in January. Last note on the shading, because I don't need the barrels to go all the way to the ground and they're going to be lifted up two feet, I don't have to cast quite as much shade in here. I've drawn a parallel arrow here. You can see the dashed kind of paler orange arrow is my original angle with the sun shading. Now with the barrels being a little higher off the ground, I've shown with the solid orange arrow scooted over a little bit here where I can now put shading and still not hit the barrels in June. That allows me to have a slightly shorter shading device, which is nice, and I end up, in my case, measured it off at scale at 68 inches or 5 feet 8 inches of shading that I'm going to apply from the top, kind of coming down on the roof. Next double check here is to make sure I'm still getting full sunlight on my growing beds. If I draw in a growing bed area schematically here that is about three feet tall, which is my comfortable working height, and three feet deep, which is about as far as I can reach comfortably, you can see that both in January and in June, those growing beds, if they're out in front of these barrels, are going to get basically full sunlight over the whole sides of the growing bed, and that works well for what I wanna do. Moving to a less abstract design, I've drawn in here the barrels on wood framed platforms along the wall, held back with some more wood framing. I've got the growing beds in front of them and then because I have this access path along this wall, I've effectively created my own little cold sink here where the cold air can drop in the winter and my growing beds will stay above it. Doing a side-by-side -side comparison here of the original Wallapini concept and then an abstract version of what I've just designed, you can see we've really replicated all of the key elements. The glazing is mostly above. We are sheltered partially on both sides. I've got thermal mass in full shade when I need it and in full sun when I need it along the back wall, growing beds that are getting full light, and a cold sink in the form of this lowered pathway. All in all, I think this design, although it's not a pure wallapini, uh, it works in the suburbs and it achieves a lot of the same benefits. Those are the basics of how I walked through my shading, my thermal mass, and my growing area for a recessed wallapini style lean-to greenhouse in the suburbs. I hope the logic was helpful. I'm sure I didn't touch on something. If you have questions, please leave them below and I will do my best to respond to them. Otherwise, if you have tried anything similar, please share. Uh, I'd love to know how it went. Until next time, I hope that was helpful. Thanks.